What is the cross product and how do you calculate it? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to learn how to determine the cross product step by step. Let's start with what the cross product is. Let's say you have two vectors v and w. On the left, both vectors are written in Cartesian vector form with the i's, j's, and k's. And on the right, the vectors are written in a form where you just enclose the coordinates in a bracket. Another way you can write this too is enclosing the coordinates in a bracket and then just separating the numbers with a comma. So, what exactly is the cross product of two vectors then? Well, in simple terms, the cross product, also known as the vector product, is the axis that is perpendicular to both of those vectors. In this example, v conveniently lies on the x-axis, and w conveniently lies on the y-axis. Now, what's perpendicular to both the x and y-axes? Well, it's the z-axis. So if we take v cross w, which would be 200 cross 030, we would get 006. As you can see, the cross product lies in the z-axis. But unfortunately, not all vector pairs you're taking the cross product of conveniently lie on the x and y axes. So, let's talk about how to calculate the cross product. The cross product of two vectors takes this form here. Now don't let this scare you, we're going to go through it. This expression on the right is the cross product in Cartesian vector form. We could also write the cross product in coordinate form here. Either or is fine. Just note that in the coordinate form, for the y-coordinate, the two numbers that are being subtracted are actually switched compared to Cartesian vector form. Of course, you could go ahead and memorize this, but I'm going to show you a better way. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our numbers into the table, and we're going to cross out the top row, and starting at the left column, we're going to work our way to the right. So as you can see, the numbers that are not crossed out are the 0, 0 in the middle row, and the 3, 0 on the bottom row. We're going to multiply the top left 0 by the bottom right 0, and then we're going to subtract the top right 0 times the bottom left 3. So in other words, we're going top left times bottom right minus top right times bottom left. And that gives us our i term, which is our x-coordinate. Immediately following the i, we put a minus sign. Then in the next step, we're going to cross out the j column. And now the numbers that aren't crossed out are the 2 and the 0 in the middle row, and the 0 and the 0 in the bottom row. Just like before, we're going to multiply top left times bottom right minus top right times bottom left. In this case, the 2 times the diagonal 0 minus the top right 0 times its diagonal 0. And that gives us our j term, or the negative y coordinate. Immediately following the j, we put a plus sign now. And finally, we're going to cross out the k column. The remaining numbers are the 2 and the 0 in the middle row, and the 0 and the 3 in the bottom row. We're going to multiply the 2 times the 3 minus the 0 times the 0. This gives us our k term, which is our z coordinate. Simplifying the expression, we get this 0i minus 0j plus 6k. And in our coordinate form, it would just be 0, 0, 6. And that is your cross product. Now, there are three more pretty interesting but important points I want to cover. First of all, one thing to note is that w cross v does not equal v cross w. Instead, it equals negative v cross w. And here's why. Whenever you're performing the cross product of two vectors, the first vector always goes in the middle row and the second vector always goes in the bottom row. So when we put in w cross v, we get this. Doing our calculations just like we did in the previous example, we get this new vector. As you can see, the 6 is negative. Now let's solidify our understanding of the cross product with a practical example. Let's say we have a wrench, and the length of the wrench is represented by the vector r in feet. And we apply a force to it called f, which is in pounds. And now we're asked to find the torque, which is also known as the moment. To do this, we simply take the cross product r cross f. And in doing so, in a manner just like before, we get the following vector. Let's put in our units, of course, which would be pounds foot. Simplifying our expression, we get 2i plus 16j plus 4k. And in coordinates, we get 2, 16, 4. And this is the torque vector. In other words, the axis around which the wrench spins. And that brings me to my second point. The cross product does something else for us too. In this example, the vector 2, 16, 4 
gives us some additional information. We can use it to find the magnitude of the cross product. In this case, we can use it to find the magnitude of the torque. To do this, we just simply take the Pythagorean theorem on our cross f. In this case, the square root of 2 squared plus 16 squared plus 4 squared, which works out to be 16.6 pounds foot. And that brings me to my third and final important point. I'm going to tell you how to determine the direction of the cross product in a practical application without ever having to use a calculator or a pen or paper. It's called the right hand rule. You may have heard of it, maybe not, but here's how it works. Here we have r cross f, which will give us the torque, or the moment. We'll represent this with a capital M. To use the right hand rule, point your four fingers from the origin to the direction of the first vector, and then curl your fingers to the second vector. What will happen is, your thumb will point in the direction of the cross product. If you can't curl your fingers in the direction of the second vector, then it means that you have to face your palm upside down, sideways, or however it is you need to get it, but you have to use your right hand. But there you have it, that's the right hand rule. Now let's take a look back at our first example. Remember how we did V cross W? It gave us 0, 6, 0, which lies in the positive Z axis. Applying the right hand rule, if you point your fingers along V, in this case, the X axis, and curl your fingers towards W, the Y axis, the result is your thumb is pointing up, that is the positive z axis. Now what happens if you do w cross v? Well, you point your fingers towards w and then curl your fingers towards v. The result is your thumb is pointing downward, that is along the negative z axis. So that's it for this video. Why not give these problems a try? I'll leave the answers in the description.